Mughal gardens are a type of garden built by the Mughals in the Persian style of architecture. The founder of the Mughal Empire, Babur, described his favorite type of garden as a char bal, which is a Persian and Indo-Persian quadrilateral garden layout divided by walkways or flowing water into four smaller parts. Today, there are two different gardens, both of which go by the name Shalamar Bagh. One is in Srinagar, in the Jammu and Kashmir province of India, built by Jahangir in 1619 to 1620 and completed by Shah Jahan approximately around 1630. The other Shalamar Bagh is located in Lahore, Pakistan and was built in 1641 for the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan. This garden has three terraces, two great terraces with four-part gardens and a smaller entry court at lake level. The uppermost garden or Baghi Fez Bakhsh served as the Zanana or the zone appropriated for women and had a pavilion of black marble set within a square pool. The middle terrace Baghi Farao Baksh had a more public function, including an audience hall. The lowest and most public level had the Divani Am, a hall of public audience. This garden had a mountainous topography, which helps its water naturally rush and torrents to animate the garden. The Shalamar Bal in Lahore. This Bal was constructed in 1641 for the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan. The construction was remarkably fast, lasting only about a year and a half. The site selected for the Bal was a riverside site close to the Ravi River. It is oriented in the south to north direction and unlike the mountainous topography of Kashmir, Lahore was flat and lacked naturally rushing torrents to animate the garden. Hence, water was brought by canals to the south end of the complex and raised by water wheels to cisterns poised above the gardens. The upper terrace was used by the emperor and his harem. There is an Aramga or royal sleeping chamber on the south and the Begum Ki Khwabga or queen's sleeping chamber on the west. In the middle of the eastern side, there was a separately enclosed hall known as Nakarkhana. In the wall enclosing the Bagh, there are six corner towers, four of which are at the uppermost terrace and two corners at the lowest terrace. Middle Terrace In the center of the dividing wall of the upper and middle terraces, there is a large white marble cascade nicely carved and inlaid with black marble lining. In between the great cascade below the Ivan and the tank is a royal marble throne with skillfully performed railing. In the center of the great tank approached from the pavilions is a raised platform called Mahatabi. It was used for outdoor sitting or to enjoy the moonlight. It is paved with marble and has a grilled marble railing. On the eastern and western fringes of the great tank are two pavilions built in red sandstone. In the center of the northern side of the middle terrace, there stands two imposing pavilions which were originally built in white marble. The lower terrace. This was a hall of private and general audiences. The layout of the lowest terrace mirrors that of the uppermost terrace. And in both of them, the Chahar Bagh was subdivided into 16 plots. In the middle of the southern side of the lowest terrace lies the Chini Khana. It is a recessed area faced with small marble niches below the monsoon pavilions.
the hydraulics of Shalamar Baal. Water was brought by canals to the south end of the complex and raised by water wheels to reservoirs constructed above the gardens. The complex water storage system of aqueducts was devised by Mughal architects to provide water supply on a large scale in the flat terrain of Punjab. Stepping the gardens in three great terraces allowed just the right amount of water to flow through a central canal. From the middle terrace, one begins to understand the mechanics of Shalamar's hydraulic system. Water flows through 22 pipes, of which several feed the tree sides and waterfalls, while others supply the fountains of the lower terraces. Water also spills east and west into the water channels of the middle terrace and from there down sandstone chaddars to the lowest terrace. The tank is in effect a large elevated reservoir with the potential energy to drive all the waterworks below. Despite the natural conditions of the site, water is ever present in the Shalamar Bagh, flowing under platforms through pavilions, over textured chaddars and the chinni khana, and in fountain jets set in channels and elegant basins. In wordy gardens of Shalamar and the empire, the ruler was the source from which all prosperity and energy flowed. The waters of the garden displayed this beauty, order and precision of the ruler.